What is going on, everybody? It is your boy Al with the Heavy Hitter Bully Crew, and we are back with another lit video for you guys. And in today's video, we're going to be covering Can an American Bully Be a Protection Doll? And in this video, I'm going to be giving you my personal opinion, being that I own two and I'm building my own program based around the American Bully, and I'm into training and training protection work into my doors. So, with that being said, please don't forget to like, comment, and sub to the channel. Check off the bell notification icon to become part of the family. And with that being said, let's get into the video. <laughs> so can an American bully be a protection dog? Well, I'm gonna give you an extensive answer, breaking it down to you so you can get an idea of the things that I'm doing, what I'm looking for, and what I'm tapping into to try to bring this out. So first and foremost, you have to understand the foundation of the breed. The American bully is the American Staffordshire Terrier bred back to the bulldog. Basically what they wanted to do, and I said this in a previous video, you wanna keep the pit bull look, but give it the juice. The bigger head, the firmer top skull, the big bone, the muscle, the thickness, the compact back. That was the whole objective behind the breed. Now, if we're going further back, we're looking at the American Pitbull Terrier bred to the American Staffordshire Terrier, which was talked about in a previous interview with an interviewer and Dave Wilson. Now, this is the thing. You have to understand the roots of the American Bully. Can they work? Yes, but this is the thing. They bred it to the Bulldog to make it more of a companion breed, basically taking away the aggression and taking away the traits that made the Pitbull what but it was and this is the thing when we're talking about can an american bully work you need to first and foremost have to understand what drive is what their prey drive is are they toy driven or are they food motivated these are the things you have to study in observing your dogs now this is the thing you have to understand the other dogs that are in your american bully's pedigree are they lazy are they working what type of frames do they have dogs that are a little bit more athletic are going to be more net to want to work why is that because they're showing more of the terrier traits if we're talking about the XL American Bully, you're talking about more of the Master Juice, the Kane Corso Juice. When you're talking about a dog that is in that realm, you have to understand what the Kane Corso is, right? The Kane Corso can protect, yes, but they're not as consistent as, let's say, a German Shepherd or a Belgian Malinois. And when we're talking about the complexity of the breeds and trying to pull out the drive and smartness and being able to tap into things, you have to understand that the Kane Corso, the Masses, were bred for a specific purpose, to defend, right? Protect. But this is the thing, you have a dog that is defense-driven, the dog might not be as sharp as it pertains to protection work. Now, this gets even more broader when we're talking about what level do you want to get at? If we're talking about personal protection, American Bullies absolutely can protect. If we're talking about getting into the realm of IGP gaming shit snug, that in my opinion is out of the conversation as it pertains to the American Bully. Why? Because you need to have a dog that is able to do all of those functions but be very agile and mobile, which is something the bigger brolic frame cannot give you. You get what I'm saying? So let's break this down a little bit more. So when it comes down to can my dog protect, first and foremost, you have to understand that not every dog can be a protection dog. Why is that? Because every type of dog has a completely different set of traits that make up their personality. And what does that mean? So first and foremost, you have to do an evaluation of the puppy. Why? Because you need to see certain things at an early age. How do they feel being manipulated? How do they feel being turned around? How do they feel when they're getting different types of hands on them? Are they whining? Are they crying? Are they more inept to be a little bit more defense driven? These are some of the things you have to look at as a puppy because these behaviors are gonna be what ultimately makes them up as they get older. If you have a puppy that's showing at a very young age that they are extremely confident, a dog that is showing that they want to play with the toys, a dog that's very engaging with the owner or the breeder, and they are looking to work and they're consistently energetic and want to go. These are the traits that are consistent with the foundation of building a good protection dog. And this is the thing, you have to understand what these things are. Now, the biggest thing that I forgot to mention earlier that you need to absolutely do with your dog before you even engage in starting this whole process, you need to assess how confident the dog is. When you bring your dog into a new area, how are they running around? How are they moving? Is their head up? Are they walking with confidence? Are they just going everywhere, hopping on top of things? Or are they more reserved? These are things that your dog needs to have in nature because you need to have a very confident dog, a dog that lacks fear to be able to train a stable protection dog. You get what I'm saying? Next, you wanna be able to test their prey drive because this is the biggest thing when we're talking about drive in general. For protection work, your dog needs to have great prey drive, but they also have to have great defense drive. So when you see the decoys with that stick, 
with the little thing attached to it. If they're tapping into the defense drive and then they whip it out and then they're slamming it down, that's a tap into the prey drive. And you wanna be able to have your dog be even keeled in every situation, whether it's defense driven or prey driven, your dog needs to be even keeled and ready to work at any point and being able to shift those drives when we're talking about protection work. Now, this is the thing, right? Once you're able to assess where your puppy's prey drive is at, from there, you wanna be able to engage them with tug of war. And you wanna see how much they love to tug with the toys because this is how protection work works. The process, you start off with a little tug toy, right? And then you progress that way up into a bigger tug toy and then a bigger tug toy, which then progresses its way to a bite pillow, then a mini sleeve, then the suit. You get what I'm saying? So there's a whole long process to be able to build all of that up. As far as it pertains to the dogs that are being trained in protection, it starts at a very, very young age. Now that you see where they're at with the toy and you see how locked in they are, you follow their eyes. Are their eyes following that toy? Do they really, really want it? Are their teeth chattering? These are things that you need to be observant for and looking for because it makes it much smoother with a dog that goes along the process about training them protection because you have to build it up. It starts with a toy. You get what I'm saying? Now, if you have a dog that doesn't show that high prey drive, a dog that, you know, is more food motivated than toy driven. That's a dog that in my opinion, is not a dog that it's reliable. It's not a dog that's gonna wanna work with you because at the end of the day, you need to have stability when training a dog in protection work. You get what I'm saying? Now, how do you test for the prey drive? First and foremost, what you wanna do is you wanna get yourself one of those flirt poles. And what you wanna do is you wanna see what your dog does. Put the flirt pole out in front of them and just move it around. And if they're going for it and they're going OD for it and they're trying to scratch at it, that means that they have great prey drive, especially if they're going for it consistently and there's no stopping. If a dog is in the middle of you doing the flirt pole and they just stop, no good, red flag. The biggest thing I would tell you is if you're trying to train your dog in protection work, those highly desired toys that your dog wants to work for, you have to keep those away from them. Do not leave those around. Do not leave a bucket of toys around. Leave them somewhere where they have high value so that when you bring it out, your dog is gonna wanna work for it. You get what I'm saying? So now that you've assessed all of these categories with your dog, you see that they're stable, you see that they're extremely confident, you see that they're a dog that can go all day and play all day and nonstop if you let them, they'll run around all day. These are dogs you can work with. Now, why is all of that important? Like, why did I just go on that whole thing? Because a lot of people say that the American Bully can't work. And this is the thing, a percentage of them can't. A percentage of them are bred to just be big cats is what I call them, stay at home cats that are just brolic and muscle. They don't have the drive, they don't have the speed, they don't have the functionality to be able to work. However, when you breed a certain way and you're trying to build a complete overall dog, which is what I am trying to do with my program, you're able to create the element of bringing out that working side to them while also keeping the traits and the look. And that is why my answer had to be very extensive as it pertains to can an American Bully be a protection dog? Absolutely, if they show the traits that I have discussed on this video. If they are extremely confident, they have high prey drive and they have high toy drive. And you need to have a dog that has a balanced temperament, which the American Bully has. You get what I'm saying? Because those are the biggest things you need to be able to teach a dog protection. Now, if we're talking about the Mastiff Juice, there's a reason why you have XLs attacking judges in the ring. There's a reason why you have XLs biting other dogs and biting their owners because when you're dealing with that massive juice, they're not that stable. They're defense driven. So that is why you have those issues with the bigger dogs. You get what I'm saying? So can an American Bully be a protection dog? Absolutely, if they show the traits that I've discussed in this video. So with that being said, let's wrap up the video. Okay, everybody, that wraps up the video. Hope that each and every single one of you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like, comment, and sub to the channel. Check off the bell notification icon to become part of the family. And with that being said, what I'm gonna be doing now is I'm gonna be doing a series basically showing and discussing some of the things that I've addressed in this video because it's big that I want you all to get an understanding as to what prey drive looks like, what toy drive looks like, what frustration looks like, what does it all look like when you're teaching a dog to bring it all together. So stay tuned for all of our other videos as it pertains to these elements, especially if you wanna work your dog and you wanna get a better understanding of how to read them and what you're looking for specifically. So that wraps it all up. Have a blessed day and we'll catch you in the next one. We're up and out of here. <laughs>